Hi, good evening, everyone. Sorry that we're late. We were caught up in our budget meeting. I'm so sorry. My apologies. Hello, Kim. How are you? Hi, good evening, everyone. We, we Hi, give me two over. seconds. Let me just finish this call. Sure. Hi, Nolan. We, we made it over. We were at our uh, budget and district statement of needs uh, meeting that kind of went over. Um, so we are here. I'm glad that you're here. Yeah. Yako, you're here. How are you? <laughs> wow, looking super relaxed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, give us a minute as we have. Um, We let everyone in. Um, my apologies to everyone uh, for the late start as our budget meeting definitely went over uh, over time. But we're here, uh, we're waiting for everyone to arrive. Chair, there you are. Assembly member Richardson, we see you. Dwayne, okay, we're here, we're here. Mr. Katz is here, got it. Yeah, Mia, how's Evelyn? I have to check on her. I, I actually gave her a call, but I did not, I wasn't able to get through, but I definitely have to reach out again. Mr. Chair, maybe we should do a, a, a prayer for her at some point or mention her at some point during the meeting. That'd be very nice. Thank you for that, Yako. This is Loray Brown from One Brooklyn Health. I'm on the line as well. Join in. You can join in now. So we'll talk more about it. I just wanted to raise the. Hi, Ms. Brown. How are you? Glad to have you. Sorry Thank for our late start. You were um, in the midst of our budget meeting. Yeah, I under understood. I, I actually peeled off on another Zoom meeting for yours. So no worries. Got it. Thank you very much. Welcome, Ms. Brown. Thank you. Good to see you. Nicholas Armon are here. Okay, Mia, in the interest of time, we're gonna allow maybe another two minutes just for people to oh how, how many people do you have in the waiting room? Do you saw people? Um we the waiting room is empty. We have 54 in the meeting. The waiting room is empty? Waiting room is empty right now. We're good to go. Okay, we're going to call the meeting to order. Uh so the time is now 719. Hello. We're calling this, we're calling hello. this meeting to order. Yes, hello. Uh, yes. This is Bishop Gonzalez. Hi, Bishop. Good evening, Bishop Gonzalez. Gonzalez. How are you? Just in time, we're just starting. So we're calling the meeting okay. to order, 720 p.m. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening for our general board meeting for the month of October. My name is Fred Baptiste. I'm the chairperson for Community Board 9. Uh, going down our agenda first, well, we actually normally we would have the rules of uh, order. We're going to waive the, the rules for this evening. Uh, simply, those are actually available through the, uh, the, through the district office. Uh, we just want to make sure that everyone understands this is a place of respect, a place of communication, a place of collaboration. All viewpoints are respected, and we want to make sure that everyone understands that. Uh, we do our best to try and make sure that people have an opportunity to speak, but only at those times as, as designated. Uh, just because we want to make sure that people are heard, and we want to make sure that we are able to achieve our agenda for this evening. Next item on the agenda will be uh, applications uh, for the Landmarks and Preservation Committee uh, Commission. We have two applications that we'll be reviewing this evening. One is for 115 Fenimore Street, and one is for 1860 Bedford Avenue. Uh, our housing chair is not available for this evening. Uh, the housing committee did review these applications. They voted on them to uh, have them heard by the full board. Is there any representative for 115 Fenimore Street on with us this evening? I, I believe that's Mr. Phil Katz. I will, um, hmm, hold up, Mr. Katz, hold on one second. Phil, if you can unmute Mr. Katz while I retrieve his presentation, I'd appreciate it.
All right, Mr. Katz, you should be unmuted at this point. Mr. Katz? All right. And, and just as a housekeeping item for all those who are not speaking, please make sure to keep your microphones on mute so that way we're not getting any background sound. Mr. Katz, the floor is yours when you're ready. Yeah, Mr. Katz, uh, we can't hear you. Uh, are you unmuted or do you have something? Okay, me, if you can unmute Mr. Katz, I think it's audio for you. I believe we're having some technical issues. Uh, Mr. Katz, if you can hear me, we're going to uh, mute you and move on to the Beckford application while you get your technology in order. Okay. All right, so we'll come right back to you, Mr. Katz. Uh, all right, the next application uh, before the board this evening will be 1860 Bedford Avenue. Do we have a representative from, from that residence? Yes, Anne Marie Stanislaus representing 1860 Bedford. You can hear me? Yes, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to uh, make the presentation. So um, this present um, is my, is, is every, does everybody have a copy of the slides and everything? I know Miss the first person was supposed to go before me, so. May I continue? Oh, yes, please. Sorry. Okay. We're, we're okay. Give a brief overview. Um, the application is very basic, so you can just provide a verbal. Okay. All right. Very good. So this presentation is basically to legalize two pre-existing landmark um, uh, violations currently on the property for work done without a permit uh, from landmarks. In particular, the fence and the gate around the perimeter of the property and the area walkway adjacent and parallel to the house facade. Um, and to be clear, uh, the fence and the walkway was not uh, there originally. So in this, in this presentation, um, we'll show how both the fence and the walkway are consistent in both style and historical character. Uh, to other similar properties in the Lefferts Garden Historical District. Um, therefore, as the guidance and recommendation by the staff of uh, the Landmarks Commission, uh, we were applying for the aforementioned violations to be legalized. In the beginning of the presentation, you will see three photos of 1860 Bedford Avenue and the cast iron fence oh. That's currently around the property. So, are you able to go to page LPC one? Miss Sedalus, I'm trying to get the application loaded. You can just proceed. Um, oh, okay. All right. So, um, in in any event, in application in pages one four and uh, LPC five and six, they all show photos of the gate and the fence from different ankle angles and vantage points. And you will clearly notice the, the designs on the fence. Okay, so likewise on page LPC six, the photo on the left, you can clearly see the cement area walkway that wraps around the facade of, the, of uh, 1860 Bedford House. Um, and on the same page, the photo on the right shows how the hedges that we planted completely conceal the walkway to the point that um, it's not visible when you view the house from the exterior. Similarly, um, on, pages, on page LPC one, four, and five, 
they all show photos of the house from different angles in which the vegetation conceal the walkway. Uh, even though we will make the, um, the cast iron presentation, the, the case that this presentation uh, is similar, has similar and identical walkways, uh, and they're all common in the immediate area of the historical district, um, and should therefore be legalized, we wanted to go one step further and show how the entire walkway area is totally concealed by vegetarian. Therefore, the view of the house from the exterior is essentially a complete return to the historical look of the house as per the LPC2 photo. So on page LPC3B, what we did was we show a letter coded map where we identified locations of each of the property shown in this presentation in relation to 1860 Bedford Avenue, which is marked with the large black dots on the corner of Bedford and, uh, and Midwood. Um, now I'd like to move on to the properties we identified in the historical district that had a cast iron gate and fence that were of similar style and character to 1860 Bedford Avenue. Um, at this time also, um, if you don't mind, I know you, I'm not sure if my slide is up yet. Um, I would have liked to pull in Jeff, who was um, who's one of my uh, colleagues and he's been working with me diligently, um, you know, to help me pull this presentation together so we could put our best foot forward. But I'll just keep going. Jeff, are you there still? Uh, I'm here. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, so, uh, well, right now uh, we would be showing the first property located on page LPC9, which shows 66 Midwood um, Maple Street. So, Jess, you, Jeff, you want to just talk about that a little bit? Uh, yes, uh, 66 Maple Street is uh, the property we found that was the most similar to 1860 Bedford Avenue. Uh, it's a freestanding house. It's a colonial revival house of similar size, uh, perhaps even the most distinguished house in the entire historical district. So we felt it was particularly noteworthy that this house has just about the identical cast iron fence uh, and it's nearly identical in you know, it's cast iron and the style is identical to the one at 1860 Bedford. So we thought that uh, being the most prominent house and a freestanding house in the entire area, similar to 1860 Bedford, uh, that was, uh, we thought very noteworthy. And that's on LPC uh, slide, LPC nine, uh, for those who can who'd see it. Um, the, the second property we picked on LPC 10, shows 122 Lincoln Road, which is also a freestanding house of similar size to the Bedford house, to 1860 Bedford. Uh, and for those who can see it, uh, not only is the cast iron fence and gate of similar style and character to 1860 Bedford, but so is the cement area walkway that is behind the vegetation that can be clearly seen uh, on the photo on the right, which shows the wall, which shows that the walkway extends both to the right and to the left of the main walkway, just as is the case at 1860 Bedford Avenue. So the photo on the left is sort of a zoom out photo of the entire freestanding house. And then the zoom in photo is a photo of the gate, the style of the gate and showing its similarities to 1860 Bedford Avenue. The next property on LPC 10, uh, 11, I apologize, shows 1880 Bedford Avenue, which is just a block away from 1860 Bedford. Uh, the house is almost the twin house built by the same architect uh, way back when in the 1920s. And like 1860 Bedford, it is a corner house with the colonial revival style of similar size. Uh, and that can be seen, uh, the photo on the left shows from uh, the corner, the entire house from the corner, from the uh, zoom out vantage point, 
And then the photo on the right shows the cast iron fence, the detail of the cast iron fence and gate, uh, very similar of uh, style and character to 1860 Bedford Avenue. Moving to the next couple of uh, slides on LPC 12. Uh, I hope, is everybody following with me? I hope so. Um, on LPC 12, there are two photos of semi-detached corner homes with a cast iron fence of similar style and character to 1860 Bedford. The photo on the left shows 117 Midwood Street, which is directly across the street from 1860 Bedford. And we did look for properties that were very close in proximity. Uh, and um, uh, the photo on the right shows another uh, semi-detached uh, corner home with a very similar uh, cast iron fence as well. Now, uh, I just wanna point out um, that uh, in regards to the cement area walkways, um, Oh, I apologize. Let me get to LPC 13, which is an additional two photos of attached row houses with the cast iron fence, again, of similar style and character to the 1860 Bedford fence, uh, you know, with the same circles on top. Uh, all of these fences are just about identical. Both of these row house properties are just down the block from 1860 Bedford between uh, Bedford and Flatbush Avenue on Midwood Street. So these are just down the block from 1860 Bedford. And those are the ones uh, that represented the, the similar fences and gate to 1860 Bedford. Now, in regards to the cement area walkway, uh, I'd like you to turn to page LPC 14 and LPC 15, which show four row houses just a few houses down from 1860 Bedford on Midwood Street between Bedford and Flatbush, just a few houses down. Like 1860 Bedford, all four of these homes have a cement area walkway behind the garden and vegetation uh, and are adjacent to the front facade wall and are located either to the right or to the left of the main entrance walkway and are approximately two to three feet wide, similar to the 1860 Bedford home. Uh, as I noted before, LPC 10, which showed 122 Lincoln Road in the fence and gate portion of the presentation, uh, I had pointed that out before, that is also a freestanding home of similar size to 1860 Bedford. And again, you can notice the, on the, on the photo on the right, the cement area walkway behind the vegetation uh, uh, that clearly extends both to the left and to the right of the main walkway. And again, is approximately two to three feet wide. So uh, that was just pointing out a, a similar freestanding home to 1860 Bedford. Mm -hmm. So all of these aforementioned properties, as well as some additional properties that are noted on the letter coded map on LPC 3B. Uh, uh, so these properties in the presentation were noted on that map in the bold. And the ones that are not in the bold are additional properties that also have these similar walkways and characteristics. All of these that are on the color coded map on LPC 3B uh, all show walkways in the historical district that are of similar size and character to 1860 Bedford. Uh, Anne-Marie, would you like to uh, yes, sum things up? Yes, I would definitely like to do that. Thank you very much. Um, so in summation, um, what we're looking for is we would like to legalize the pre-existing landmarks uh, violation on both of the fence and the walkway at 1860 Bedford Avenue. And by presenting the properties in the Leffords Garden Historical District, um, that are the most similar and relevant to 1860 Bedford, freestanding homes, colonial revivals, corner homes, <clears throat> excuse me, and neighboring homes. We have shown how both the fence and the walkway at 1860 Bedford are perfectly consistent in both style and historical character to these aforementioned homes um, 
in the Lefferts Garden Historical District. So we hope you will vote in the affirmative to give us the opportunity um, to present our case before the Lands Landmarks Commission. Ms. Sandless, uh, thank you so much for that information. Um, we are having a technical issue so that um, this evening and the application is, is pending in terms of loading into the chat so that our membership can actually see uh, what exactly it is that you're asking for, the rendering of what you're asking for. Um, so in the interim, uh, thank you for that information. What we're gonna do now um, I believe Mr. Chair has moved forward to our SLA applications and then during the presentation of that application, get your LPC information into the chat so that people have the, um, the option to review so that they can make an informed decision later on in the evening. Okay, so Thanks. should I, should I um, stay put until everything is done or? Um, Mr. Chair, are you going to require her to stay? Essentially, she's um, uh, provided all the necessary information. I think um, the only thing that the membership is miss missing it are, is the rendering so that it can actually see the layout of what's being asked for the fence restoration. And hold on while we unmute the chair. Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> One moment. I am coming. One second. Find that piece. Where are you? Mr. Baptiste, you should be unmuted. No, hold on. There you go. Got it. Got it now. There you go. Okay. okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, good. No one tell my wife about that button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Stanislaus and Mr. Uh, Mr. Porter. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. For the presentation. So we're sending, I think they just sent out the, we should be sending out the presentation to the board so they can review that as well. Uh, and we'll be considering that this evening. So the recommendation from the housing committee was to approve that application. We do have another applicant for LPC before we move on to um, before we move on to the, the SLE application. Mr. Katz, are you still on? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I apologize in advance. In the interest of time, if you could just give a brief summation of your application. Absolutely. Um, and what you're asking for from the board. Not a problem. Uh, is there any documentation that you've already given to the the board already or yes yes they circulated they, they circulated it in the beginning of the chat so it's Fantastic. a 12 page powerpoint presentation and essentially uh what i'm here for is uh legalize the restoration of a chain link fence that was there previously um and uh received the lpc an lpc violation for it because i was honest mistake didn't know i needed to get a permit to replace like in kind, but you know, I understand that, that I need one now, but uh, again, thank you all for your time and I will not take up much of it. Essentially 115 Fenimore was a burnt out, you know, run down house that purchased a little over three years ago. Uh, there was a fire there, I wanna say about 10 to 12 years ago. And uh, we, we, you know, labor love. Personally, I wanted to, I bought the house for myself to move into and uh, you know, it took way too long and my wife, my wife wasn't having it. So, uh, you know, filmed another option, but still obviously finished the house. And, uh, you know, I, I believe we restored it to its original 1940 glory. If you look at, you know, the, the slides that I put together, I have a lot of comparisons between what the house was and what it looks like today. But, you know, the, the, main, the main thing here is addressing the, uh, the, the chain link the replacement of a fence without a, without a permit here. And uh, if you look at slide four, the property is 60 by, the lot is 60 by 100. And when we did a property survey, when we purchased the property, there was a uh, clearly a fence around the entire property. 
So there was approximately 320 square feet of fencing around the property. Um, when we replaced the chain link fence, I replaced the front yard fence um, and poles and two other poles on the side yard. And I replaced in total about 110 feet of chain link fence out of the 320 that was there. And that was all damaged due to the construction fence that was put up in front of the house while, while, while construction was ongoing at the house. So, you know, I, I hope that everybody can, or I hope that everybody does appreciate what we did with the house and the, you know, labor of love that we put into it. And, and, and to me, it's a lot more historically correct than it was when we first purchased the house in, in, in 2017. So I hope everybody just appreciates from, from, from you know, for, from us taking it from what it was to what it currently is today. And uh, you know, thank you all for your time. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer any questions that anyone may have. So now everyone can see the chain link fence in question. And actually this past week also, I uh, planted uh, 16 four foot abravites, you know, like there are sort of like th thinner evergreens. So the fence is not as uh, in your face as it is. And you, you sort of don't even see it now with, with those there. Cause I saw there, there was some, uh, some plantings close to the fence, uh, you know, pre you know, way back when. And that's uh, you guys can see the uh, how the fence was damaged with, uh, with with that big construction fence in front of it for you know a little over two years. And then I think seventy four Lincoln Road on this slide is essentially the most, I guess, like and kind house. And you know, it shows that they had in the historic tax photo, the driveway gate, the chain link fence, and uh, the house is pretty similar in nature. So, uh, you know, I think we did as good a job as we could with the fence, given, uh, you know, we weren't given much other options <laughs> as to what to put, but uh, we're really happy with the end result. And we hope everybody else is too. Uh, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, you should be unmuted. One moment. Hello, can you hear me? There you go. Yep. 
Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, Mr. Katz. Um, thank you. All right. Uh, for, for board members, very briefly, are there any questions that you have for either one of the uh, the applicants uh, for the, L, uh, the LPC? Very briefly, we'll entertain a couple of questions. I have some to use the function if possible. I'm going to take a look. I'm going to take a lift. I see Ms. Pinkerton. Is there anyone else who would like to ask a question? Yeah, Mia, could you please unmute Ms. Pinkerton? Sure, give me one moment. Thank you. Uh, hi, I typed it into the into the chat, but I just said that I, as far as I could see, um, the slides went by very quickly. Um, the the fencing in front of the driveway, something typical for your street was I. So, so original, if you look at um, the, look if you look at the 1985 uh, photo, um, there was a, uh, a driveway gate in front of the house and that's on page, slide six, page six. Um, and uh, also when we purchased the house, the driveway poles were there. Somebody uh, stole, stole the gates. <laughs> so uh, that was there. And, and, and also if you compare it to uh, uh, 74 Lincoln Road, which is slide 10, they had a chain link fence and driveway gates also in there. And, and, and I only included that house with the chain link fence and driveway gates because there are several other houses that have this, but those have violations on them as well. So we, we essentially, when we fixed the fence, I tried to just replace like and kind and, and replace exactly what was there before. And, you know, in my ignorance, I didn't know that to replace like and kind, I needed a, a, a permit from, from LPC in order to do so. So, uh, you know, that's essentially why you know, I'm here tonight. And, and, and you know, again, Appreciate everybody's time, but uh, that, that was previously there. All right, thank you for clarifying. Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ward Member Hecht, was your question answered? We'll take your silence for consent. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so the materials should be before the board. You'll have an opportunity to review those. Uh, we will be voting on uh, the, the recommendations. We'll be voting on the recommendations of the housing committee during the voting portion of the meeting. Uh, we're going to go next to um, the liquor license application. I'm gonna call the chair up momentarily. However, before we do so, I would ask if we do have any members, uh, any elected members, uh, any elected officials who are with us this evening, please make sure that you let the district office staff know you are here so we can recognize you during the acknowledgements portion of the agenda. All right, uh, at this point, uh, do I have the chair of the Public Safety Committee online? Yes, give me one second. I'm gonna um, unmute Yako. Am I unmuted? Muted, go ahead. Thank okay, you. I just want to, Chair, before I begin, I just want to briefly say that I, with regards to Mr. Hecht's question, I am unclear as what the process is. So two individuals, there was a building that was landmarked or a property. They mistakenly um, touched the property or changed the property without permission from landmark or approval. Now they're coming before the board to ask us to retroactively give them approval what happens if we give them approval? What happens if we don't give them approval? I'm not clear on the process and what the request is. So at some point before we vote, I'd like to add somebody should really clarify what exactly is being asked from the board. I can chime in very quickly, knock off. Um, LPC um, requires that any changes to homes that uh, reside in the landmark part, portion of our district appear before the community board, however small the changes uh, 
may be, whether it is for windows, fencing, anything of the like. It is a requirement for the applicant to appear before our board, provide a rendering of exactly what's being changed. And thereafter, they have to still appear before LPC who would then render a decision. Um, but just to be clear, of course, in this capacity, we are advisory as LPC, um, even if the board contests uh, an applicant's um, rendering or uh, request to change a portion of the property, it is LPC who has the final word as to what uh, the applicant is mandated to do. So um, just a bit of clarity. I see that uh, Suki dropped some information in the chat, but um, just to be very clear, the board can make a recommendation, but LPC has the right to overrule um, in spite of any recommendation that the board's put forward. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, actually, if you can unmute uh, Rabbi Berman again, he will now have the floor so for the, um, the State Liquor License Authority uh, applications. Yeah, can we unmute Rabbi Berman? Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you, Amia. Um, we have three applications before the board. One is a renewal and um, to our new applications. As many of our board members are aware, we are in very, very difficult times. And we ask the full board to consider the fact that for small businesses to survive under the current COVID circ circumstances, it's incredibly difficult. In addition, I understand there was a shooting um, a few nights ago, a tragic shooting. And of course, our condolences and our thoughts are prayer. Our prayers are, our prayers are with the victims and their families at one of the near one of those locations. So we're talking about an incredibly difficult time and some difficult locations. And we asked the full board when considering these applications, take into consideration um, the time we're living in and the locations of these establishments. Um, I don't know if anybody is, if any of the um, applicants are here with us, Mia, please clarify. But yes, I do believe um, that Tessa, the, the, the Tessa is also on the, Tess, Tess is also on the committee. She was going to share a few words also uh, about these applications. If you could unmute Tessa if she's here, we'd love to hear from her. Most definitely. Um, just to be very, um, just to be clear, I see Mr. Janelle um, here as a representative for uh, Elvin Concito. And I also see Mr. Hideki here for Silver Rice, uh, the representative for Zamni at Hawthorne and Ocean Avenue. Please um, identify yourself in the chat to me so that I can rename you as the representative for that business. Thank you. Um, Tess, I'm gonna unmute you now. Go ahead, Tessa, you're unmuted. Um, so good evening, board board members, and, and thank you, uh, Chair uh, Berman. Um, I, I just made a statement uh, during our subcommittee meeting um, where, where it piggybacks to what um, Rabbi Berman um, just uh, elaborated on, that um, when we're reviewing the applications for uh, wine and liquor license or even full licenses to um, establishments that come before us, um, I would just respectfully request that we um, uh, try to keep some of our personal feelings out of what we feel about liquor and what we feel about alcohol and its service to the community. Um, what we are attempting to um, uh, be clear about is, is the uh, potential uh, survival of small businesses in the community. And one of the few things that come before us is the liquor license for um, restaurants and, and, and cabarets and, and um, uh, watering holes and the like. And uh, prior to COVID, uh, these were places uh, uh, for relaxation, um, more so for some of uh, the younger people in, in our community to be able to um, gather, uh, commune with each other, uh, eat, 
uh, drink and not necessarily be merry. Uh, so that um, if we uh, have to, we should be considering what uh, another eatery, another restaurant, another business, another uh, uh, a person that wants to take a chance on Community Board 9 and its inclusive environs to bring us a variety of cuisine, um, a place to relax, um, places for our young people to gather, um, even for uh, possibly other um, uh, neighboring communities uh, to come in if some of our establishments and eateries uh, can uh, develop uh, safe and uh, good reputations and our local uh, cultural and exotic cuisines can be shared um, throughout Brooklyn and even New York City. So I would just um, like to suggest that we keep this in mind as we say yay or nay. Um, what we're saying yay or nay is not necessarily to alcohol and what our personal or religious feelings might be about alcohol, but we're saying yay or nay to, to a restaurant and the renderings and the support of small businesses um, in the community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rabbi Berman. Uh, the first applicant, is, is there a representative for the first applicant here? I'm going to um, unmute, unmute Mr. Janelle, who's a representative for Elwin Concito, opening up a business on Empire. Give me one moment. Mr. Uh, good evening, members of the board, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Uh, good evening. So um, my client, uh, we had uh, been before the board uh, previously, and we explained uh, that my client is moving her location. She has a location currently, uh, and she's moving the location to Community Board 9, uh, specifically 347A, 347B Empire Boulevard. Um, and uh, she has a Mexican uh, Latin American restaurant. And uh, what is Mexican food without a margarita? So uh, that's what we're looking for. Um, the, the, the client is looking for uh, the possibility of applying for um, a full liquor license and is requesting the boards. Been in business uh, for quite some time. She has experience and, um, and uh, she requests the board's approval. Uh, I'm not sure why the board didn't approve it the last time. Uh, was there any clarifications that the board needed? Um, no, I'm going to unmute the, SL, um, the public safety chair, but that is um, the way the applications are escalated. You first appear before the public safe committee, safety committee and then before a full membership to provide um, background to um, an informed voter on your application. Give me one moment and while I unmute the public safety chair, thank you. Hi, thank you very much, Mia. Your, your um, establishment appeared before the public safety committee and we voted uh, unanimously to support the application. And the process is that once they appear before the committee, the vote then goes to the full board. Um, we saw no reason. We saw we saw a community. You, you've established community supports. You seem to be in compliance with all the regulations. At least it appears to be to us. Um, in addition, there are no police reports or fire or fire uh, complaints at your location, and we saw no reason to um, object to your application. In addition. We, um, we felt that it's incredibly uh, courageous that your establishment and your client is moving forward despite the great difficulties. They still believe in our community and our city and we applaud them for not giving up hope. And we hope we will soon come to a time where we could all go out and eat without worry, without concern 
and see this community flourish once again. So no, absolutely, we supported their, the committee supported their application and we thought they were, um, again, we were, we were, we applauded their courage during this difficult time. Great, thank you. And if anybody has any questions, I guess, Mr. Chair, um, I dropped the application earlier in the group chat. If anybody has any applications, I mean, any questions, I guess they're welcome to ask. Um, Beverly and Wesley's iPad. Um, give me one second, Beverly. I'm heading over to unmute you. Give me you one just call me a cl have the uh, please clarify your address and the name of your establishment for the committee members for the board members. Mr. Janelle, uh, yes, can you all hear me? Yes, sir, please. Great. It is, uh, the name of the um, business is El Riconcito Mix Corp. And they are moving to 347A, 347B, Empire Boulevard. Where is that? It's, is that next to the checks cash place? That actually is going to substitute the check cash place and the pharmacy. So the check cash in place going out of business? Yes, that's correct. And the pharmacy as well. What? <laughs> but you're the have only to place to get a free money order in Brooklyn. Jesus. Can you um tell us more about the business? Because even though you're saying they're relocating. I can't bring the restaurant up in my mind. Could you tell me more about the business outside of them wanting a liquor license? Okay. Um, currently, they're operating. Let me see if I can get the current location for you. Uh, One quick moment. My apologies. Um, she is. She's been in business for about a year or two years, I believe, and she um, is planning to transplant the business yeah. into a Mexican Joe? Latin American restaurant at this location. So she's going to take the check cashing place that was there before and the pharmacy and combine those two and make uh, a, a nice establishment uh, for the community uh, serving Mexican. Um, she's an owner operator. So she cooks and she uh, operates. So she cares a lot about her clients. She cares a lot about the business and uh, and, and the community. Um, so she's a family restaurant or a bar? Is, no, she's a family restaurant. She's a family restaurant. Um, there is an additional question. Uh, Wesley's iPad. Give me one moment. Uh, Wesley's iPad. You've been unmuted. Please provide your inquiry. Hello, everyone. Um, I actually don't have a question. I'm the representative for Zami. Restaurant 1206 North Strand Avenue in Brooklyn, the corner of Houghton and North Strand. Oh, got it. We'll be getting to your application next. Thank you for identifying yourself, though. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Are there any additional questions for the El, El Rinconcito application? All right, should we move on to Magic Hat, Amia? Sure, uh, that is the gentleman who was just speaking. Uh, if you want to provide an yes. introduction ahead of um, him sure. speaking. So I, I also dropped the, applic the application in the, in the chat box earlier. 
I just want to say again, somebody mentioned on the chat, obviously, as a board, we want to take everything into consideration. But I also think that we have to be very sensitive to the time. And we have to be as know. encouraging as possible to small businesses. Um, I think I'm going to let the establishment speak for themselves. They could tell the board uh, about themselves and, and, you know, their past and what they're hoping to achieve. You can unmute the gentleman. One moment and I will unmute Mr. I put it back to the original option. One moment. Hello, sir. Representative Fazamni, you're unmuted, please. Hi, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Wesley Jean Simon. I'm the executive chef and owner of Zami Restaurant in 1206 North Shore Avenue. Uh, this is my second time in a meeting for approval for a liquor license for our establishment. Uh, we had bring everything to the board last meeting and they were rescheduling us for this meeting right now. So if anyone have any question, it's been a very difficult time for us in that corner lately. And if anyone have any question, please let us, let us know. Just clarify, you're 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 also known as Magic Hat Food, and yes, we are Magic Hat Food, Food Corporation. Right now, you've been just. Why don't you briefly tell the board how long you've been in operation, and how business has been during COVID, and what you hope to, uh, where we are, where, what are you asking for, and what, how do you, what do you hope to achieve going forward? Uh, we opened on February second, which is Super Bowl day. We had to close on March twelfth due to COVID. And we waited a month and a half because we were new to the business. We didn't know we could stay open to do like, you know, takeouts and to go for the community. So we took a month and a half off and we decided to reopen again after. And we did a lot of uh, carry out to goes. So we took our time until the last board meeting. We were two, week, uh, two weeks after the last board meeting to open our 25% inside because we wanted to be in compliance. We had to do everything like, you know, um, remote, basically menu. We had to put QR code on our tables. We had to put sanitizers, uh, single sanitizers on the tables. And uh, and we have the handless sanitizers at the door. We try to do everything first before we had to reopen our inside. And um, as you all know, what happened in that corner last weekend and uh, some of our guests got scraped up from running away and uh, one of the bullets hit actually hit our side yes. door. Sir, I think you should clarify. I mean, I know, I think you should, there was a shooting on the corner. Unfortunately, I believe there was one person that was killed there. Is that accurate? Yes, one person was killed in that and shooting five, on the corner. Five people were- I was injured. And we worked with the we police have community. Yeah, I'm sorry, C continue. Yes, we work with the police in the community, 71st Precinct, very closely. We give them full access to our camera because last time I spoke to you guys, I told you I just newly installed the cameras on the outside, some 4K cameras, so they could capture everything that went on. And basically, that's the investigation is ongoing. Um, but some of our pedestrian in the corner becomes so bad and so dangerous, we reached out to the mayor office. We reached out to the everybody that can, we can reach out in the community. We send emails. Currently right now, we're putting a petition together for the community and all the small businesses for more security in the area. We're gonna do a signing walking up and down the Nostrand Avenue to talk to everybody and let them sign the petition so we can actually put more security on the block. Maybe they could put a tower on that block with the cameras, with somebody watching at all time, 24 seven. Now we do have a cop car in the corner but I think we, uh, the shooting happened while the cop car was in the corner. So I think I shooting, they came from the other direction. I heard from NYPD that they avoided the cop car and they came from the other side and the cop car did not see them until after shots were fired, I believe. Yes, yes, they did not see it until after shots was fired. Um, I was standing outside actually when it happened, 
talking to some guests and we ran first with the first one to run and try to help the young man that ran from that corner. And when he fall on the ground, the one that passed away, uh, we try to help him and the cops ran and just give him first aid. We call the ambulance and we help him out. And it's been very difficult for us. Like, like this is my seventh shooting Excuse since me. we've been there. Excuse me, is that also in Nostrum? Yes. Corner of Nostrum. Yes. Well, well, I live exactly on that street, so I know what you're talking about because it's a building next to ours. So I can see your plight. I know I lived there for 24 years. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And I have watched your um, establishment trying to get together and be relevant in the community. So I applaud you for that. And I also sympathize with your plight. So I know what you're talking about. So thank you very much. Thank you. And it's like, you know, you're welcome. For me personally, um, we applied for the liquor license. We wanted to bring the best food, best taste of Haiti. And we, the drinks we try to do is basically straight from the island that they work with, like, you know, in the small rural area. We wanted to give everybody a taste of real what Haiti is supposed to taste like and food and how we pair our food with our drinks. And like, you know, put a better light on our community because there's not that many great Haitian restaurants you could come in and sit down and have a great cocktail. and enjoy your neighborhood. And we try to provide that in, in Adzami with everybody. And truthfully, <laughs> nothing really scared me. As a chef, I've been an executive sous chef for Hard Rock Cafe in Times Square. I've done managed 27 cooks on a night with 11 dishwashers, 46 servers on the floor. And I know how to ha handle very heavy situation. And that last one really scared me to see that young man and see how this neighborhood is getting destroyed from gang violence. And the reason why I wanna reach out to the rest of the community is to find out what can we do to make this area safe. And it's getting to me now, it's not even about business no more, it's about the community. It's about the neighborhood, what's really going on? How can we fix it? How can we stop this? And if we have to have a neighborhood meeting with the boys in the corner, maybe offer them food, sit them down in the restaurant and find out what's really going on. How can we help? I'm up for suggestion, believe me. It really shook me what really happened this weekend. <laughs> like I never seen something like this. So I'm asking the neighborhood board for the approval so we can actually provide more funding for the restaurant so we could provide more to the neighborhood. To, Cause I'm not going anywhere. I live right down the street from the restaurant on Cotelio. I can walk home every day and I want to be able to walk home or ride my bike back to the restaurant every day. So if you guys would approve me, I will show you guys the best of Haiti and cocktails and taste and restaurant food. And I'm ready to switch my menu and keep providing more and more every day. I think we should take questions. If anybody has any questions, I just want to say thank you for your courage. I'm sorry for what you witnessed and, and you sound like an incredible person. It really loves our community and, and thank you so much for keeping strong and believing in us during these dark times. Thank you. Any thank questions you. from the Mia? Can we yeah. take some questions? Oh, Beverly from... has a question. Beverly? Um, sir, am I correct in thinking that your restaurant just happened to be there? The, the shooting didn't restart as a result of something that occurred in your restaurant. It started on the outside. The am I they sell drugs on that street. corner, Beverly. They sell drugs on the corner. The shooting was, according to NYPD, the shooting was gang related and not related to any restaurants or any establishments on the on the block. That is correct. Uh, with Starline of the previous uh, business that was on the corner had issues as well with the ongoing uh, gang issue on Hawthorne. And that has been a historic issue. Been a historic yes. issue. For the board's information, they're, they're not living there. They don't live on the our street. They don't live on our block. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, Yakov, I have a, 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 I just need a little clarity because I'm listening to what everybody identify, is just saying. Not identify yourself so the board knows who's talking. Oh, I'm sorry, Francisco Leopold. Um, it's not for the gentleman for how fun. It's just for the Empire Project because I'm looking at, I'm reading 
the chat and what's been said. So I just want some clarity as to that area because I thought the restaurant was really coming on empire of itself. But then um, I noticed that from the board office, it says the corner. So that means the PLG um, cash checking places live in. And I know that I talking heard you talking. talking about, and, um, Francisco, you're talking about the previous restaurant, right? Not the current person presenting. You're talking about the person to present. That's what I just said. I said that the gentleman from Hawthorne. I'm talking about Empire. All right. So I, th I think, um, Mia, can you send Francisco the application and maybe I can before... send the application. Uh, that's, that's not what I, um, I don't need the application. I'm just asking a question because I know somebody said it is not the PLG. It is the Western Union. You know, and then you guys are talking about. Oh, you just want clarity on the location. They will be taking up uh, this and replacing the PLS check cashing place and extending um, down Empire. Next to the pharmacy. Next to okay, the pharmacy. So that I, that I understand. So does anybody know as to why the PLS is living? Because I know we are talking about preserving businesses in the community and work and everything. And then this is the only place in the community for the cash check-in place and where people are going. That's the only establishment like that we have in that area. So is there anyone who knows as to why? Is it because of lack of... Um, um, I'm not very sure, but we can definitely reach out to PLS um, um, offline so that we can proceed with the meeting now. And I'll get back to you tomorrow. Thank you, Fran. Uh, Yaakov, uh, or I believe Beverly had uh, some additional comments. No, that's okay. I, I, I was just, I was speaking. Oh. I understand. Okay, got it. Uh, Melissa. Thank you. you. Thanks, Beverly. Melissa? Yeah, no, I just wanted to, my name is Melissa. Um, and I, I do live on Hawthorne and Nostrand. So I, I really do applaud Wesley for continuing to stay on, even though um, it is a difficult location. And I wanted to also just thank him because they've actually done a lot of beautification on the block since they've gotten there. They've done a beautiful mural and they've put out some trash containers, which they've, they've painted very lovely. Uh, so I just wanted to thank him for the beautification that he's already bought to the community. Thank you. I get that. Are we, are, me, are we, are we finished all questions for this applicant? Any more questions? There's only uh, the final applicant. Hold on. Mr. Alvinor has a question. I think then we're going to cap it off and move on to the last applicant. The last applicant is a renewal. So and we are well past the eight o'clock hour and still on the applications. Yeah. And before, and before we, uh, we, we go on. So Anyone who's interested in public commentary, please let the uh, district office staff know that you're interested in commentary, and then we're going to begin right after we consider uh, we hear from the the, the last applicant. Me, Again, I just want if you are an elected out. official on the line or representative, please make sure you let the district staff know so we can get commentary. So there are people trying to get into the meeting. Me, I'm told that are that are having issues. I know there's been some issues with hackers you know, being sensitive, but let's also try to make sure that anybody from the community that tries to get in is allowed in. Uh, our, our waiting room is empty at this point. We have 61 participants in the meeting. Thank you. Thanks. May me ask my question? Mr. Almanor, go ahead and we're gonna move ahead to the next application. Yes. Uh, based on the discussion, I understand the situation at the corner of Arthur and Nelson has been historical. And I also heard saying the people doing the problem on that corner do not live there. So something must be attracting there. So there must be some link. Can we find what that link is? And we're working with the police department and the people involved, how can we do to mitigate this situation? I, I think those are great ideas. And me, I think we should follow up with, with NYPD. And it's, it's, it's really uh, inspiring that everybody, so many members of our community want to get involved. And I think we should use this as an opportunity, a, a tragic murder and, and death and just un, unacceptable violence and, and horrible situation. And I think that Mia, you should follow up with whoever, whoever asked questions and wants to be involved. And we should we do whatever we can to work with both the community and law enforcement to put an end to this violence and, and, and protect our community and protect our streets. Uh, definitely, if anyone is interested in um, continuing and participating in this conversation, please reach out via the board email, bk09 
dash one at cb.nyc.gov. Uh, and moving right along, I'm going to unmute Mr. H uh, I don't know if you want to provide an intro for Silver Rice. I'm going to uh, mute uh, Mr. Hideki, who is the appointed representative. There's no introduction needed. They're a well-known establishment in a, in a known location. Mr. Hideki? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Hideki Kato from Silver Rice, uh, Swiss restaurant on Flatbush Avenue uh, between Mayho and uh, Midway. I'm here tonight uh, for the application for renewal for soft liquor license. Uh, please ask, uh, ask me any question. For who? Silver Rice Hooger, right? Yes. Uh, Hugo is the uh, company name. Uh, we do business as Silver Rice. Right. And just to clarify to the board that this is really a, it's 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 um, a recommendation that appear before us. They are not required for renewal applications to appear before us. Um, we reached out to NYPD and the that. fire department, and we were not aware of any complaints or community opposition to. Um, supporting this renewal and it's the recommendation of the committee to uh, support the renewal. Is Mr. Hideki still here? Yes, sorry. Um, I think uh, we're just waiting for just a brief overview of the cu cuisine serve, confirmation of the location, a bit of background. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we've been in business uh, more than five years in the same corner. Uh, we are selling the uh, sushi roll. Uh, we are a uh, very small restaurant. We have only five to six uh, eating space inside. Uh, we only do delivery takeout. Uh, since coronavirus, uh, end of March to end of April, uh, we close the door, uh, reopen, and um, we try to do the uh, indoor dining, but um, safety of uh, our employees and also customers are our priority. So we try to focus in on delivery and takeout uh, until next year. All right, do we have any questions? Um, yeah, can we move forward? Um, let me know, uh, Chair. Are you done? I guess, um, uh, Chair, Mr. Baptiste, are you ready to move forward? I believe that's the conclusion of our SLA applications. Just to summarize, Mia, we, the, the committee voted to support all three applications, the no, two no. new applications and the renewal application. Got it. Thank you very much, Yakov. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Chair Berman. Uh, so that concludes, uh, well, yeah, that concludes the, uh, the, the applications. We are now going to go into the public comment period. Public comment is for a duration of 30 minutes maximum. Uh, Mia, do we have anybody who signed up for public commentary? I believe we had our assemblywoman, Diana Richardson here. I'm seeing if she is still here. And I do not see her. Oh, yes, she is. Let me unmute her. Assemblywoman Richardson. Please join us. Just waiting for her to unmute herself. I requested to unmute. See you as well, Ms. Boyd, you'll be recognized. All right, and if there's anyone else who would like to speak for public commentary, please either raise your hand or put it in the chat and we'll recognize you. Uh, the assemblywoman seems to be um, involved in another call, but I do see that Eli Slavin is on the line representing um, our 
uh, Yvette Clark on the line. Give me one moment. Mr. Well, we're not up to acknowledgements yet. So when we get to acknowledgements, oh, we can get Mr. Slater. Public comment, public comment. I'll, public I just see Ms. Boyd. Ms. Boyd. Ms. Boyd? Okay, please unmute Ms. Boyd. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, um, I just wanted to find out why 960 Franklin Avenue is not on the agenda, considering that it's about to be certified on November the 16th before the next general board meeting. So why isn't there a topic of conversation about that? So that's the first, it's just a question. The second is I just wanted people to be aware that there was an issue at one Sullivan place that we had brought um, to the community board, to the land use committee, uh, where a 12 story building was supposed to be built on Sullivan, taking away uh, five windows, and they did not have proper egress inside of the building itself. Um, we just heard back today that that permit has been rescinded and revoked. So, and I just wanna thank uh, the CB9 staff, in particular, Ms. Hilton, for following up with the Department of Buildings and making sure that our community residents stay safe against um, developers who try to skirt the law. Um, to go back to 960 Franklin, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with that, but that's the very contentious rezoning that has been in the works um, that's the development that's along the Book and Botanic Gardens where they're planning on building 40 stories, 45 story building in a six to seven story height limited zone. We obtained uh, a memo from the Parks Department that basically said that, that that development would destroy the Book and Botanic Gardens. We are protesting the fact that we have not received the application, the resubmitted application that was submitted in, in uh, September the 22nd, that should have been forwarded five days later to the community board. And we're also, there was a new charter revision that was placed um, last year that we voted in at the Citizens in which it, in which it mandated that the Department of City Planning give notice about any potential development that they planned on certifying, along with a detailed summary that describes what they planned on certifying. So we did not get that. We did not get the detailed summary. They did not provide it, nor did they provide the environmental impact statement, which was supposed to be given to the community board. So even though there is an emergency meeting that's being planned Thursday, there's nothing that we can plan because we don't have anything to work with. Um, and so I'm just wondering why the community board is not putting that development on site now so that there could be a discussion about what it is that the community board plans on doing because the city charter regulations is being violated in this particular instance because to give us 30 days and tell us you're going to certify an application and not give us the application so we know what you're about to certify so that we can push back against it or have our objections known makes no sense. And that was the whole purpose of the city charter revision. So those, and then again, I want to congratulate the people at 1035 Washington Avenue on one Sullivan place for coming out and pushing back against that particular development and we're happy that that building permit has been rescinded. Thank you, Ms. Boyd. Uh, I will be touching on that. That will be touched on during committee reports and during my chairman's report with regards to 960. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mia, are there any other, any, anyone else who have signed up for public commentary? Seeing none, we're gonna to go to acknowledgements. Uh, Mia, I'm going to ask, uh, is, uh, Assembly Member Richardson, has she, is she able to join us right now? I'm going to request to unmute and, um, I've submitted this request and she's not responding. Um, Dwayne oh. is here her, from her office. Dwayne, are you able to, uh, 
provide some insight on the assemblywoman? Uh, yes. Uh, so she is actually, um, you know, it's a busy time for the office. There's a lot going on. Uh, she's been listening in on, on, the, on the meeting just to keep herself informed. But uh, I'm actually going to be presenting for the office and, um, you know, bring your regards if, if that's okay with the chair. I, I'd, I'd be happy to move forward with that. Absolutely. Uh, so again, you know, on, the, on behalf of the member, um, she, she's juggling quite a bit right now. Um, uh, as you all are well aware, there are quite a few things going on in the community and she's always, uh, you know, she's a very hands-on person. So she's always on the ground trying to get things done uh, and uh, being a very multifaceted and, and dy dy dynamic person. So uh, with that though, uh, I just wanted to bring greetings on behalf of the office. Um, say thank you again for having us. Thank you for hosting your regular meeting um, and engaging in the community so that uh, our, our members in the community, our residents get an opportunity to express um, their, their positions and ideas. Um, our office in particular has been um, very diligent over the summer in um, you know, stepping in in spaces where uh, there were shortfalls uh, during the, the pandemic. So uh, as some of you may be aware, our office for 26 weeks um, provided meals to the community, um, almost, I, I believe the numbers are almost 2,000 meals a week for 26 weeks, so that's some 52,000 meals to families. Um, we continue to provide services as much as we could during the pandemic and the COVID crisis, so we were still trying to offer people an opportunity to get things like Scree and those sorts of things done and uh, helping out where we could and helping um, our community members find resources. Um, you know, we continue to um, be on the ground. Um, you know, the election season has begun. Um, so we have been, you know, we, we've run multiple voter registration campaigns. We encourage people to go out and vote. It's the early voting season. So make sure you uh, contact the Board of Elections to find out where you need to go to vote uh, and make sure you get out and exercise your franchise. Um, in addition to that, you know, we are aware of some challenges in the community right now. Uh, I believe the topic came up earlier about uh, the Hawthorne Street um, uh, tragic shooting incident. Um, know that our office is working with other elected offices um, to try and mitigate some of the issues on the ground there. We actually are trying to put together a meeting uh, with the residents in the community on that block for this Friday. Uh, the details are being worked out and as soon as everything is final, we will be notifying the uh, the community in, in the immediate area and uh, you know uh, members of the public safety committee and the chair you're welcome to join that meeting uh, if you are available we will send that information to the board uh, but you know with all of that said again you know the member encourages you all to reach out to the office uh, we are here on empire boulevard at 330 empire boulevard we are not open to the public as we are still retrofitting our office to um, you know, take constituents in this COVID environment, uh, but uh, we are open Monday through Monday, I'm sorry, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, we are open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Wednesday, we're open from 9 to 4 now. Um, specifically this Wednesday, we're going to be hosting uh, another uh, pop-up market, uh, so where we give out uh, free produce boxes to the community. So. If you are available tomorrow morning, um, it's first come first serve at 9 a.m. Uh, we usually feed somewhere near 400 families every Wednesday or provide food for 400 families every Wednesday. Uh, so we encourage you to come out tomorrow if you're available. And uh, we are open on Fridays remotely. Uh, we are working on Fridays remotely from um, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So again, feel free to reach out to the office at any given point though during those hours. Our number is 718-771-3105. Uh, usually someone will answer a call. If you get us during off hours or you get the voicemail, leave a message, someone will follow up with you. Uh, and we will do our best to either get your problem resolved or point you in the direction of someone who can get your problem resolved. All right, so if anyone has any questions, uh, please let me know. I'm here for the remainder of the meeting. You well, feel free to, to to send me a message in the chat. Thank you very much, Dwayne. Uh, Thank you. Let me see, Mr. Slavin, we see you are on the line. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, again, this is, my name is Ellie Slavin. I'm community liaison for Congresswoman Yvette D. Clark. 
We, our office is open, but by appointment only. So please, any federal issues, call us at 718-287-1142. We're located at 222 Lennox Road between Rogers and Ostrin. Our office has been busy with veterans issues. We've been very busy with expediting, helping people expediting passports on uh, emergency issues and base on emergency uh, travel. Um, I just want to make one announcement. The Congresswoman will be sponsoring called Winter is Coming, Cracking, Tackling actually the COVID-19 pandemic. It'll be hosting of seven, a panel of seven experts in medical field. This will be Thursday, October 29th, 5.30 to 7 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. Also, uh, to get more information or if you want to post any questions, please email our office and it's teamclark09 at gmail.com. I'll repeat that, teamclark09 at gmail.com. If you want to take part in this, in questions or get any information on, from these seven experts on the pandemic virus. So also the Congressman wishes all stay safe at practice uh, the uh, safety and stay safe. Let me just also mention our number is 718-287-1142. Thank you very much. Uh, Mia, who else do we have with us this evening? Excuse me, we do have Portia here representing our Senator Sal Ivano Myri. Portia, if you can uh, unmute yourself, or I'll be on the way to unmute you momentarily. Hello. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, continuing to keep the community informed on what's going on. I bring greetings from State Senator Sal Ivano office. Um, just wanted to let everyone know our office, um, just like many offices are open to constituents, but by appointment only. Uh, if you guys can look in the chat, I put the link uh, to the appointment, um, to the scheduling link, and that is for constituent services only. Uh, it is not a link for people to schedule a meeting with the state senator, uh, but for constituent services only. Um, and also for those uh, community members, if you know of any that may not have access to um, the internet, uh, they can also, our number is there also. Uh, and I'll just say it for those who maybe cannot see the chat, it's 718-284-4700. Uh, again, it's 718-284-4700, and we are open uh, for appointments only, and we are open um, Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, just wanted to give a couple of updates of some things uh, that have been happening um, uh, with our office and the things that we've been doing. Uh, so along with Assemblywoman Richardson's office, thank you so much, Dwayne, for uh, speaking about it. But for uh, 26 weeks, we did uh, partner with Assemblywoman Richardson's office uh, to be able to feed the community right across the street from CB9 um, and on Wednesdays uh, with well central kitchen uh to be able to give away fresh fresh fruits and vegetables uh every wednesday at 9 a.m i do believe however tomorrow this wednesday will be the last um installment of the fresh fruits giveaway so if you know anyone uh that is in need of fresh fruits and vegetables uh please have them come out um it is going to be tomorrow um we start at 9.30 a.m., uh, but the line does get pretty long. Uh, so if you know anyone that may need it, it will be in front of Assemblywoman Diana Richardson's office at 3.30 Empire Boulevard. Um, they can definitely come out, uh, just make sure they have a mask and they're uh, willing to stay socially distant uh, as we're able, we're trying to feed the community. Um, Second, uh, I just want to, for anyone who has 
been traumatized throughout this, uh, you know, pandemic and, you know, the senseless violence that's going on in the community. I just want to give my condolences and, you know, my heart felt. I hope you all are doing well and I hope you all are taking care of yourself. And that is from the office as well. We do this work and we love the work that we do, but please don't forget to take care of yourselves. Uh, in saying that, uh, we are in partnership with Assemblyman Richardson's office and, um, Catholic Charities, we are doing a Thanksgiving, not Thanksgiving, but a turkey giveaway on November 17th. That is a Tuesday, uh, starting at 8 a.m. in the morning. It will be at St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, we will start the lineup on Lincoln um, Road, which is right around the corner from our office on Lincoln Road uh, by the parking lot uh, and make that turn onto Nostrand Avenue and then back down Maple. Um, and so we will be giving away turkey starting at, I believe, eight o'clock in the morning on November 17th. Um, I Once the flyer is created, we will disseminate to CB9 so that you all will be able to see it. Um, and it's on a first come first serve uh, basis. Uh, and we would like it if you need it, uh, please come out and get it. If you don't need it, uh, just tell someone else who you think might need it. Uh, if you guys have any questions for our office, please feel free to call. Uh, the number is in the chat and I'll say it one more time. It's 718-284-4700. Again, my name is Portia. I'm the district director for State Senator Zona Mary. Thank you all so much for your time. Uh, thanks, Portia. I believe that we also have uh, Kim Robinson from Councilwoman Alika Amper Samuel's office. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kim Robinson, and I represent Councilmember Alika Amper Samuel. I don't have any announcement, but at the moment, um, our office, we are working remotely. I put our number in the chat. It's 718 953 3097, Monday through Friday, and someone will. Um, Someone's always there to answer the phone to assist in whatever way. On behalf of the council member, we want to say get out the vote and to stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Oh, Thank sorry, you. I forgot to mention. This is Portia again. Please forgive me. Early voting started. Do it. <laughs> so far, so far, I think uh, Brooklyn, uh, New York, in itself, uh, according to yesterday's ending numbers, we have had over a hundred and one um early voters um and so we are encouraging people to vote early the first three days of early voting um at a lot of our sites here in brooklyn and particularly in cb9 have been crowded and so you know we are encouraging our uh, seniors uh, if you don't you know if you don't want to wait uh on the long line if it's not a long line uh, we have typically seen uh, since last year hasn't we can't quantify too many years because it's only been one. Um, um, the later uh, dates, uh, like a Wednesday or a Thursday, uh, the lines don't seem to be that long. Uh, so, But we are still encouraging people to go out and vote early. Uh, if you have not gotten your absentee ballot by election day, you will have to go out and vote um, on election day. And we are encouraging everyone to make sure they get voted. You guys get out there and you vote and you do your civic duty that way. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Portia. And Chair, if you don't mind if I piggyback really quickly, for any senior that wants to um, vote early, uh, they can simply go to the information table and advise that they would like an accommodation based on age and their Ill inability to stand for a long uh, period of time, and they will given, be given immediate entry into uh, the polling station. We have uh, our community partners on the line from uh, King. Hi, this is Lorraine Brown. I'm. Am I muted? No, you're good, Ms. Brown. Go ahead. Oh. Okay, should I go ahead? Yes. Absolutely. Oh, the all right. Well, thank you all very, very much for uh, allowing uh, me to uh, be part of your meeting. Uh, I also believe Enid Dillard, uh, who is my colleague from Kingsbrook, is on this call as well. Um, and, and Portia, I love your photograph. I just want to say that it brought a smile to my face. Um, uh, but uh, the reason I'm on, uh, I've asked to come to your uh, general meeting tonight 
is to provide an update uh, as to uh, the one Brooklyn Health Systems plans related to Kingsbrook Medical Center. Uh, and the first thing that I would say is that um, Kingsbrook Medical Center is not closing. Uh, we are uh, planning to stop medical surgical uh, inpatient services at the beginning of 2021, January 1st. Uh, we, however, will continue to provide emergency uh, services. We will have a, a full uh, complement of an emergency department uh, that has uh, two holding beds. Uh, we will continue to provide adult psychiatric inpatient services. We have 55 adult inpatient uh, uh, psych beds and we will continue to provide inpatient rehabilitation uh, services. We have a 40 bed service on the Kingsbrook campus. In addition, we uh, will uh, provide ambulatory surgical services and a comprehensive array of outpatient services uh, such as cardiology, metabolic weight management, diabetes care, dental care, radiology, and just to name a few. Our Rutland Nursing Home will continue uh, to provide uh, uh, its high rated services. Um, we are very excited that we were uh, most recently um, approved to provide special needs pediatric long-term care. Uh, and we're also very proud of the ventilator services that we have uh, in the Rutland Nursing Home. Uh, we are seeking approval by the state uh, to provide a, a young adult long-term care unit uh, within the Rutland Nursing Home as well. So from what I described, you can see that we continue to, to be and will continue to be a, a medical uh, a campus uh, rendering medical services. In fact, uh, we are very much looking forward to this being the type of healthcare uh, entity for the future with less en emphasis on inpatient beds, uh, but much greater emphasis on expanding ambulatory care services and in particular uh, specialty services. Um, folks have asked uh, what happens when the beds are closed? I'm just gonna pause there because of the paper. Okay, um, folks have asked if what happens if someone is brought to the Kingsbrook Emergency Department and or walks to the emergency department and they uh, are assessed and they need hospitalization, what happens? Um, we are as a system, uh, and which includes Interfaith Medical Center and Brookdale, we are developing what we're calling a transfer and transportation uh, center at Kingsbrook where if an individual needs to be hospitalized uh, after their immediate need has been addressed in the ED or the emergency department, they will be able to be transferred directly to an inpatient bed at Interfaith or at Brookdale based upon what their need is. Um, they will also have an option of choosing not to go to either of our hospitals, although we hope they choose uh, to do so. Uh, and we will provide transportation to Kings County, as an example, uh, our, uh, our public hospital sister uh, that is uh, around the corner from, Kings, uh, from Kingsbrook. And we also, we uh, have uh, frankly have had discussions with Kings uh, County, uh, their um, leadership, as well as uh, their executive leadership, as well as their emergency room leadership about that uh, relationship. Um, just to provide a little bit more detail uh, in terms of our uh, medical surgical services uh, transfer, transformation, uh, as part of this, we've made a commitment that no union staff will lose a job. And in fact, uh, we have been working very closely with colleagues uh, from NISNA, uh, from the Council of Interns and Residents, as well as 1199. Uh, and uh, in, in doing so, uh, just uh, to give you some uh, current information, uh, the, uh, the impact on RNs or nurses and members of the NISNA uh, labor uh, union uh, would be a, a 107, uh, 
FTEs or in, in, in people count 110 individuals. Um, so far, 89 of those individuals have accepted positions at the, uh, uh, within One Brooklyn, uh, either uh, vacant positions uh, at um, Kingsbrook uh, in, in uh, the services that I mentioned <clears throat> that will continue or, and mostly at Interfaith Medical Center and at Brookdale. Um, the other uh, 21 or so individuals uh, have uh, uh, not yet chosen and or have chosen positions uh, elsewhere outside of the one Brooklyn uh, family. Uh, in terms of the Council of Interns and Residents, uh, those 56 individuals all have uh, positions uh, that will be uh, available for them at Brookdale. Uh, there are about 334 individuals uh, who belong to the 1199 union. Uh, 133 of those individuals have accepted a uh, retirement incentive program that we developed with 1199, and the others are uh, being uh, assisted in making decisions as to positions, again, within One Brooklyn. Um, I should also mention that for all of the staff who are impacted, particularly our nursing uh, staff, um, they uh, will lose no, as they transfer to Brookdale, uh, as an example, since nurses at Brookdale are members of 1199, uh, none of the Nisner nursing staff will lose any seniority, any pension. Essentially, they are going to be moving into positions at Brookdale seamlessly without any negative uh, effect at all. Uh, they, uh, interfaith nurses are uh, NISNA nurses, and so that is not a particular uh, factor in, uh, in this transformation. Uh, I uh, should also add that uh, there are, um, are individuals who are not unionized, uh, and we are working with those uh, non-union staff uh, in terms of providing outplacement career services, and they will also receive four weeks of severance. Um, a, a major concern that has been articulated to us, which is a reasonable concern, is what happens if there is another COVID uh, surge. Um, I would, and I, what I uh, would say is that so far, the uh, communities uh, that One Brooklyn serves has not had uh, the uptick that other communities in Brooklyn have experienced. But that said, uh, we are planning uh, uh, to be able to address the needs of all the communities that we serve if there is another significant outbreak um, by planning as a system. So at the high water mark this spring, in fact, on April 6, we had a total of, of, of 518 uh, patients in beds in our on our on each on our three campuses in total. Uh, those were individuals who needed to be hospitalized, uh, who had been uh, uh, for whom it, the test uh, COVID positive uh, test uh, were um, were known, and there were also individuals who had tests that were outstanding. We were waiting to find get the final. Uh, uh, test results, but their symptoms required hospitalization. And so of that 518 individuals, um, uh, less than 120, about 119, I believe, were at Kingsbrook. What we're doing moving forward is we are planning uh, for more than 540 beds, uh, the surge capacity at uh, Interfaith and Brookdale, so that again, if there is an outbreak that uh, as we experienced this spring, after January 1st, we will be able to um, make sure that individuals needing to be hospitalized will be hospitalized at uh, one or the other of Interfaith or Brookdale uh, or within one Brooklyn. And we will have activated the transfer and transportation uh, system that I've mentioned which will uh, serve to provide immediate access uh, to an individual to be transport, transported to, again, directly to a bed, not, not stopping by way of the emergency department at uh, Interfaith or Brookdale. Uh, 
So I'm gonna pause there. It has been a long evening for many of you. I wanna make sure that rather than talking at you that I can respond to any questions that uh, any of you have. And again, I, I really appreciate your providing me an opportunity to provide an update as to our plans at Kingsbrook and would very much like to be able to come to uh, your general meeting as the months proceed uh, and as we move forward with our planning to uh, keep you apprised and to uh, answer questions that, that uh, your general membership and or others may have. Thank you, Ms. Brown, for joining us this evening. And it was, I really appreciate you coming um especially as this is something i want to make sure that we're getting good information out into the community uh, i was contacted uh, about this time last month and it, it's amazing how rumors can sprout wings and fly very quick in terms of you know things with jewish is gone going you know it's going away and there's nothing going to happen so i'm glad you were here and and definitely you know we will invite you to come back to be able to share those updates so that way we have good information about what's going on with regards to healthcare in our community uh, we, because we're limited in time, we will entertain some very brief questions. I see you, Ms. Boyd. Relax. Hold on. I got you. Is there anyone who has questions? Very, uh, very quickly, we're only going to be able to entertain one or two of them. Ms. Boyd, I saw you. Is there anyone else who has a question? Okay, please unmute Ms. Boyd very quick because we have to move on to the agenda. You mentioned the fact that you would have be at capacity to house bedding after January 1st. However, it has been predicted that the COVID-19 can come back in the fall, not necessarily just the winter time. So what is your bed capacity between now and January 1st? So uh, at King's, uh, it, let me answer the question broadly. Um, if we were to have another uptick um, between now and December, the end of December, Kingsbrook will still have medical surgical inpatient capacity. And so uh, if someone were to present to Kingsbrook they, and needed hospitalization, they would be able to get that hospitalization at Kingsbrook. Um, as to, just to give you an idea, today and every day, I should say, Every single day, um, uh, I personally get what the Kingsbrook census is at seven o'clock in the morning and uh, later in the afternoon. Uh, I get that census report for all of our hospitals. But in addition, every day around two o'clock, we get a report on the number of COVID positive and uh, uh, patients with, uh, who are pending the outcome of their test for each of our campuses. And as an example, today, uh, I believe we had four uh, COVID positive patients. Thank the Lord, uh, it's not like it was in March and April, May, or even May. Uh, but that said, between now and December, we will still be, we will be able to accommodate at least uh, the number of patients uh, that we had to accommodate during the spring. What we did at uh, Kingsbrook, uh, for um, the, the, at the high water mark, uh, we redeployed uh, certain uh, beds that like, for example, one of the psychiatric units, uh, because as I mentioned, we have 55 psychiatric beds. Um, one of the psychiatric units um, was not in use. Uh, people weren't presenting, unfortunately. Uh, so we had staff to be redeployed in the other intensive care and medical surgical uh, beds. So we are, uh, again, if there were to be a surge uh, between now and January, we will be able to um, activate our, um, our surge capacity for our system. And we would include the existing capacity at Kingsbrook. Thank you very much, Ms. Brown, again. Uh, and you, you basically have an open invitation to come uh, and present for the board. Uh, we definitely you. look forward to your updates in the future. Thank you. And again, if you get any questions uh, subsequent to your meetings, uh, please get in, touch with, get in touch with me or with Enid, uh, because I wanna make sure that as uh, leadership for the community, 
uh, planning uh, uh, board that you have up to date information, even between meetings. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and with that, we are done with our public session. We are now going into our business session. Uh, as our secretary is not here, uh, can I call on first vice chair, Warren Burke, are you on? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think your mic is muted. Can you unmute your mic? I think he remuted himself. Hold on. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Thank you very much. If I could ask uh, first vice chair, could you please call the roll? Okay. Um, we're going to have it a little differently tonight. Uh, because I'm going by a contact list, which I did, I just did a spreadsheet, so it will be out of alphabetical order. Uh, but please listen to your net for your name. And I am also missing one person, so at the end, just shout out uh, Mende Margolin, Mende Margolin, Rosemary Evering. Rosemary Evering? Here. Here. Uh, Mr. Dozier. Mr. Dozier. Are you asking for Michelle de Rosier? Oh, I'm sorry, de Rosier. I bet you guys miss me, correct? Okay, Evelyn Williams. Could you please mute yourself, please? Evelyn Williams. Ms. Williams is excused. Uh, Suki Chung. I'm here. This is Suki. Thank you. Uh, Amy Pinkerton. Amy's here. Uh, Amy. Debbie Timothy. Absent. Uh, real Peter Booms. Re real, are you present. here? Yeah, I'm here. Present, sorry. I okay, you. thank you. Uh, Melanie Lewis. Melanie Lewis. Uh, Patricia Moses. Yeah. Uh, Melissa Survey, Survey. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Caldwell. Michelle Caldwell. <laughs> Did you call me before? That's Michelle Caldwell de Rosier. Yeah. Ah, okay. That was the contact <laughs> list. I was just I was just going by the list. I will delete <laughs> no that. Worries. Okay, now I'm missing two people. Uh, Fred Baptiste. Fred's here. Robert Mitchell. Robert Mitchell. Beverly Newsom. Here. Thank you. Shlomo Hecht. You can get a good slow mo hex. Lasana Primo <laughs> present, yes. Thank you. Uh, Linda Lorde here, yes. present. Thank you. Hold on one second, I just gotta do something. Okay, Linda's here. Tessa Hackett present. Thank you. Carmen Martinez. Here. Car Thank you. Mary Blackett. Mary Blackett. Uh, Rabbi Sperlin. 
Rabbi Sperlin. Robert Dexter. Present, sir. Thank you. Alejandra is excused. Stu Balberg, Stuart Balberg. Stuart Balberg. Desma Ross. Desma Ross. Nolan Levinson. Here. Thank you. Warren Burke here. Yaakov Pearson. Here. Present. Thank you. Uh, Unella Perry. Unella Perry. Excused. Excused. Michael Lybird. Here. Uh, Rashida Radik. Rashida Sadiq, and I'm Sadiq. Okay, that was actually spelled wrong on the contact list. Thank you. Uh, Augustine Blackwell. Augustine Blackwell. Matthias Limberger. Matthias, are you there? Yes, Dad. Uh, me, yes, Thank you. Vivian Morgan. Vivian Morgan. Could we uh, put us on mute, please? Sylvester Gonzalez. Sylvester Gonzalez. Wayne King. Present. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Brown. Aaron Brown is here. Thank you. Uh, Nicholas Almanoa. Present. Thank you. Uh, Manya Lagute. <laughs> Mina Lagute is present. Uh -huh. I did pretty good, right? Great. Right. You're you. you're getting better. Thank you. This is this is why you have to appreciate Alejandra. Uh, Francesca <laughs> uh, Leopold. Yeah. Uh, Lorraine Woosley, Lorianne Woosley. Present, Lorianne Woosley. Thank you, and Virginia Bechtold. Virginia Bechtold. Now, is there anyone who I missed? Rabbi I... Ber Yako Berman is present, and I believe Rabbi Sperlin is present as well. Well, let, let Rabbi Sperlin speak up. <laughs> Thank you, Yaakov. I'm not sure if you got my vote as well. I'm here. Ra who? Shlomo Who is that? Shlomo Hack. Yeah, I got, oh, sh slow -mo. yeah, I did not get that. Hold on. Warren, yes. Bishop Sil Silveta Hamilton Gonzalez was on early. I don't know if she left. She Bishop is actually okay. on. Uh, well, she I just she yes, left. Gonzalez. I unmuted her. Okay. Uh, I was hoping she could okay. maybe pick up at this. Oh, she oh, muted herself. Okay, hold on. Hold on one second. Let me just get Mr. Hecht. Okay, and Yaakov is here, Yaakov Bierman, and okay, now. Bishop Silvetta Gonzalez, you said Sylvester Gonzalez. Yeah, hold on one second. I'm here. Very Hello. Good. Hold on. Hello, we got you. Okay. You got a Gonzalez? I got you. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. So that's good. So let me just put in Yako Berman. I'm doing this by uh, spreadsheet because we were a little surprised with Alejandra. So we're, we're just catching up. Okay, so I have. I have 13 absent which means 31 here. Uh, so we have a quorum. 
Warren of his Perlman is on. I believe he's muted. I see him on the screen. Oh, okay. Then I'll put him as here. Thank you. So make that 12 absent. We have 32 people here. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the agenda, item B, approval of the minutes. Uh, with the uh, the illness of the, uh, the secretary, uh, we haven't had the minutes submitted yet. We're going to postpone until next month, and we'll approve all outstanding minutes at that point. Uh, going to item C, the committee reports. Uh, most chairs should have received, uh, already submitted reports. Does anybody have anything significant they need to report at this time? Otherwise, we do want to move on to the other um, items on the agenda. Does anybody have anything significant? Any of the chairs? I do. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Moses. Huh? Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Moses. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to say that um, um, a pre-certification, um, well, a pre-certification third-day notice was received on Friday um, for 960 Franklin Avenue project. As a matter of fact, Friday 916, so that's important. I'm sorry, 1016, that's important. And from New York City uh, planning. Now, 965 an application on September 22nd, 2020. They are scheduled to be certified on November 16th, 2020. Therefore, the ULOC Land Committee has scheduled a pre certification planning meeting on Thursday, this Thursday. October 29th via Zoom. Now, I also would like the following committee chairs to attend. That is housing, environmental, and transportation. And, and it's really important to, this is like a, a pre-planning for us. It's important because the board at this time has no position. So therefore, we need to discuss what's going on and we cannot discuss it here. So we're just going to a lot that time so that we can just hear what the community has to say, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Moses. Are there any other questions? Uh, I'm sorry, any committee chairs who have anything they need, they need to report at this time? Okay, seeing none, uh, we're going to go to the district office report. Mia, can you provide a brief report for the, uh, the board and the community? Hi, Fred. Mia actually just stepped away for a brief moment. Um, she didn't leave me any materials to relate to you guys. Uh, let me Hold try on, to just. Back. I'm back. I'm oh, back. I'm okay. back. Hey, guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> um, right on cue. Um, um, as many of the board members know, we just completed our um, hearing for our statement of needs, the budget request for fiscal year 2020. Um, between this evening and tomorrow morning, um, the draft will be disseminated to the board membership as well as our constituency for additional input ahead of our deadline on Friday. Um, and also another update. Um, additionally, um, DOTP Do It is helping across the finish line. So it looks like we will have our new website up by the no later than the second week of November. So uh, that's all the good news that we have here from <laughs> the CB9 office. Okay, that concludes your report. Uh, that's about it. Um, I, as a matter of fact, I'm not sure Francisca spoke already, so I'll hold off. Um, I believe that there are some plans in the works to do um, some community um, giveaways or work. Go ahead, Mia. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you, Francisca. Um, Francisca had reached out to the office and thought, um, just in light of COVID and uh, the, the general downturn in, in people and how they're feeling and their access to resources, um, that the board should organize and partner perhaps with the DA's office, uh, the borough president's office, and perhaps do some type of holiday food giveaway so that we could, you know, at least brighten <laughs> some of our constituents' uh, lives up around the holidays. Um, and perhaps um, 
starting off with Thanksgiving and maybe perhaps a toy drive for Christmas, but we have to see exactly where. Um, it's not that we don't want to, but it's the how and the where and, um, in terms of what the restrictions of COVID have placed on us all. So um, if anything comes to pass, uh, it will be compiled and disseminated to the board membership to, to see if, if anyone is interested in participating, whether it would be volunteering and um, disseminating items to the community or just passing along information to your respective networks. Um, Leah, can, um, Leah, can I just add a little bit to what you just said? That's your segue for health and social services. You got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, Matthew Eugene contacted me um, to Monday, Monday or Tuesday, and he contacted me concerning that, and he will be partnering with us for um, the food some of the food drive as well as PPEs. And then I, I received an email um, from the Presbyterian Hospital from Lauren Avilena, and she said that she she have already sent some PPEs and face shield to the uh, board office. So I'm, I'm hoping that you're in receipt of that. Um, so I have some partners who are, who are uh, checking in, but so I'm so most likely someday this week, I will be meeting um, by tomorrow, I'll be touching base with Matthew Eugene again. So we are we start working on the getting some food stuff. So I'll touch base with you tomorrow. Okay. And with that, uh, me, unless you have anything else, I'm gonna go into the chairman's report then. We're good? Yes, okay, we're gonna go into it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so listen, so we're gonna begin the chairman's report. Uh, I'm gonna keep my report very brief because we do have a number of business items that we need to, to take care of. But in terms of uh, high level things that I want the board and the community to be aware of, First of all, uh, one of the things that we did discuss was virtual training for board members and for community members. So we have already sent out a state the day for November 16th. Board members, you should have received that already. We ask that you please hold the date for that. So we feel that's very important to make sure that the board members understand the responsibilities and the way that we're required to function. So part of what we're looking at doing is we're gonna be including training modules. Some of the, module, the modules are being finalized in terms of what we're going to be presenting and what training we're offering. But we're looking at uh, modules in Euler training, the budget process, which we're in, and which you've experienced, some of you experience for the first part uh, this evening, uh, parliamentary proce procedure refreshers, uh, review of our bylaws, uh, open meetings law, FOIL processes, as well as conflicts of interest. So some of these may be presented, we may expand, or we may um, have to po postpone some of these trainings. But the idea being, I want this to be um, something that's not foreign to us in terms of we're always trying to improve as a board the way we operate, improve our understanding, so that way we can be more effective when we're representing our community. Uh, the, uh, the, the chair of the search committee is not here tonight, but they've been doing a lot of work. They've reviewed over 100 uh, applications, uh, and right now they're in the process of narrowing down the list. I believe they're going to be going into the interview process where they're going to start um, reviewing some of the, the, the finalists in terms of or the semifinalists, I should say. From that process, once they've done that, they will create a uh, list of, of uh, potential candidates that will be presented to the board. So there will be additional information that comes out with regards to that, but I'm very happy uh, of, of the progress that they've made so far. They've done a fantastic job, and we're looking forward to being able to hire into the position as soon as possible. Uh, the governor has extended the uh, executive order which allows us to operate uh, electronically. So that's been extended through the month of November. I expect that it's going to be extended again. Uh, I really want to thank everyone for their, their patience and understanding and your diligence in terms of working with us in this space. Uh, I know it's difficult that we're not able to see each other, but I want to thank the board and all the committees and all the chairs for making this work. We're going to continue. We're still going to be able to advocate for our community, and we're still going to get our business done. Uh, things with Josh again, I want to thank Ms. Brown and Ms. Dillard for, for coming this evening. Uh, so again, to the point where rumors can start very quickly. 
I want to make sure that CB9 is a place where we can get the information and make sure we push it out to the public, to our community, so that way people understand what the real deal is. So Kingsville Jewish is not going anywhere. Things are changing in our community. But we want people to understand that healthcare is a priority for our board and our district. And we're going to try and make sure that everybody is, has access to quality health care. And I want to thank, um, again, the, the, you know, the, the, our, our friends at uh, One Brooklyn for everything they're doing in terms of making sure we have that in our district. Uh, the budget process, I want to thank all those members and those members of the public uh, who were able to participate in our hearing earlier uh, prior to the meeting. I apologize that it went a little long, but it's something important in terms of it's our charter mandate. And also, it's a discussion in terms of what are the, the needs that we are setting for our district, what are our priorities. So um, it's also been distributed a list of the budget uh, requests uh, for capital expenses. I ask for all board members to please review those. If you have questions, comments, uh, suggestions for augmenting those, please make sure you get those comments into the district office by email by 3 p.m. on Friday. Uh, and me, is that correct? 3 p.m. on Friday? That is correct. 3 p.m. on Friday, we need you to submit those. So that way we can make sure that there was a, those are submitted. Uh, additional steps will be outlined in terms of where we go next. Uh, it's going to go to the city. It's going to go to Office of Management and Budget. It goes to the agencies for review. And there will be a period where they will actually come back with their responses, and we will have an opportunity to reply to those as well. Uh, and as we go through these, what I'm asking for is for all of our committees to please make sure that this is a living document, so if there are needs or if there are things that come up, please make sure you're referencing those. We're trying to strengthen our budget process as we go along and make sure we're database and evidence-based. So, and we wanna work with our partners in terms of making sure we build the best cases for the needs in our community. Uh, and last, uh, our, our dealer chair already touched on it, 960 Franklin Avenue. So we have received a pre-certification notice from the Department of City Planning. That means that it is expected we are going to have an application before us for us to consider and the clock will start ticking on or about November 16th. Uh, now, there are issues and challenges around that uh, with regards to process and procedure from the district office. We're already starting to address those and ask questions with regards to documentation that we should have as a district. Uh, as we get that information, as we get responses, we are sharing that with the ULERP chair and with uh, the board and the public as as, we, as soon as we can. Uh, but I just wanted for everyone to know and understand that this is, a, this is something that's been on our radar for a long time and it's going to be time for us as a board, as a community, to actually have a conversation about this in terms of what we want to see and to make sure that uh, the interests of CB9, Community District 9, is our served. So the first step in that is to make sure that we understand the timeline and we set our priorities and we set our dates and we kind of outline the activities that we're going to need to make sure that we're in a position to consider this properly as a board and to make a, a recommendation that is in the best interest of our community. So that first step is going to be that pre-planning meeting in which we meet and we're able to, one, outline our, our time frame in terms of what we're operating from, where we're going to, uh, and kind of identify those things, that information or those things that we're going to need to do in that, in that um, you know, prior to us making the decision. So I encourage for all board members and community members to, to attend that meeting. It's scheduled for this Thursday, 7 p.m. Please come with your ideas, with your thoughts in terms of how we can make sure this process, uh, we're engaging everyone we need to get engaged and that we're getting all the information we need to have as a board. Uh, and uh, I just really want to thank our district office team, Mia and Khalid, for all of the work you do. Um, all I have to do is say, work well done with regards to the, um, the issue brought up by 1035 uh, Washington. I believe it's 1035 Washington. But, uh, but you know, basically, our residents came to us with an issue. And I want to thank you for, for taking um, the initiative and reaching out to the appropriate um, parties and getting this resolved. Uh, we do have next steps, though. We want to find out what the next steps are going to be with, uh, with regards to this. But this is exactly what we've been looking for as a board to make sure that we're responsive to our residents' needs and, our, and their concerns. I'm sorry, I do see a question in the chat. It's on aggressive. Um, and just for one question that has been in the chat, we are having an initial planning meeting on 1029. Um, 
there is another ULERT meeting scheduled on 1110, if I if I understand correctly, and the, the chair of ULERP is, is free to, to correct me if I'm wrong on that. But the right. idea being, the reason why we're having this meeting is so that we can kind of figure out what the next steps need to be. Um, so we didn't want to wait until 11, until the 10th. So this is kind of in terms of kind of getting an outline, understanding what the deadlines are, what the challenges are, especially with this dropping at this time of the year, we have to, to be cognizant of the fact that we're running into the holiday season and everything else. So we want to make sure we're taking all these things into account as we go forward. Uh, so additional meetings I'm sure will be announced. Hearings will be announced as well. But those details will kind of be more fleshed out as we go forward. But 1029 is that first initial step. Uh, and again, I think we're really calling for all hands on deck. So definitely those chairs that the ULAP chair had asked, I would ask if you could please support that effort, um, take part in that effort. Um, and all community board members and all community members as well are welcome to attend and also offer ideas in terms of how we should be moving forward. Uh, with that, that concludes my chairman's report. Um, to the board members, I'll entertain very quick questions. Do we have anything? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on in the agenda. We are now going to go to the voting items. So we are going to begin with the LPC applications. So the first item on the, uh, we had this evening was 115 Fenimore Street. Uh, the recommendation of the Housing Committee was to approve the application. Do we have any, uh, I will entertain a motion at this time to uh, accept the recommendation of the committee. I'd like to just make a quick comment, Fred. I did just notice the hedges that were planted at 115. Well, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Actually, before we discuss that, we should have a motion on the floor before we discuss it. So I'll entertain a motion. Oh. Uh, who's, uh, could you please identify yourself? You move yeah. Second, right. Michael Liebert. Okay, we have it moved and proper, uh, properly moved and seconded. It's on the floor. Uh, we will open it up for questions. Suki, go ahead. You had a question or Yeah, I just wanted to make a very quick comment. I, I live on the block at, at one fifth where 115 Fenmore is, and I did just notice the hedges that they planted that would probably grow to cover the fence. And I think that's an improvement and I appreciate that. And I think when we discussed at the manor board meeting, when we discussed the other fence at 1860 Bedford, most people thought it was reasonable. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions with regards to this application? Okay, seeing no other unreadiness, uh, we will call the question. Uh, Warren, please call the roll. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Margolin, Rosemary Everling. Aye. Uh, Dozier. Ms. Dozier. Hello. Is it DeRosier Caldwell or DeRosier? A, no, no, there's, there is an actual member, um, last name Dozier, Dozier. Yeah, and I guess they're, they're absent, correct? That's correct. Okay, hold on. And uh, just repeat the name of the person who's here, please. DeRosier Caldwell. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, Everly, Everly <sighs> Williams is out. Suki? Suki Chung? Yes. Uh, Amy Pinkerton. <clears throat> Amy Pinkerton? Amy, Debbie Timothy. 
Hi, I'm sorry. Amy is here. I just got unmuted. I, are we saying yes, we're here, or yes, we approve of the application? Yes, we approve of the application. All right, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Debbie Timothy? Debbie she's, Timothy? She's absent. Uh, Real Peter Booms? Real? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Melanie Lewis? Miss Lewis? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Go ahead, Warren. That was just Mr. King's iPad. I just muted it. Please go ahead. Okay. Miss Lewis, are you there? Uh, Pat Moses? I'm here. Yes and no? Yes. Uh, Melissa? Uh, I'm here. Yes and no? That's yes. Uh, Ms. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Baptiste? Yes. Robert Mitchell, he's absent. Beverly Newsom? Beverly? I'll go back to Beverly. Shlomo Hecht? Here, yes. Mr. Primo, Lasagna yes. Primo? Yes. Okay. Linda Lorde? Linda Lorde? Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, Tessic Hackett Vieira? Tessa? We'll go back to Tessa. Yeah, no, yes, yes. Don't come back to me. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Carmen Martinez? Yes. Rabbi Sperlin? He's muted. Well, unmute. Rabbi Sperling, can you unmute or can me? I'm looking at him. him. He's he's on. He's muted. Does he give a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Raise your he's muted. He's raised his hand. I'm looking so at what, him. All right. Can you give a thumbs up? Yes. Rabbi yes. Sperling is not muted. He should be able to speak. Rabbi Sperling, please speak. He's still muted. Okay. Rabbi Sperlin, I think you have to unmute yourself. Click on the mute unmute button. The board has unmuted you. Or you could type your, cho uh, your choice into the chat. Yeah okay. No. Did I call Mary Blackett? No. Okay. Yes or no, Mary? She's absent. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see that. Okay. Rabbi, we'll wait for later. Robert Dexter? Nolan Levinson? No. Um, Lauren, Dexter Roberts is here. He is muted. It's Dexter. Okay. Robert Dexter. Uh, Mr. Dexter? Yes or no? Okay, we can go back to him. Warren Burke, yes. Yaakov Pearson? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Yunella Perry's absent. Uh, Michael Labard? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Rashida Sadiq? Yes. Uh, Ms. Blackwell? Augustine? She's absent. Then I have a correction for the absence. I didn't hear her was absent. Okay. 
Um, Mateus. Mr. Limberger. Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Vivi is absent. Uh, Sylvester Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Mr. King, Wayne King. Yes. Thank you. Aaron Brown. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Nicholas Almanor. Yes. Uh, my, okay, forgive me for this, but Miss Lagute. Mina, yes. Okay, Francisco Leopold. Yes. Lorraine Woosley, Lorraine Woosley. Yes. Virginia Betzold is absent. And Yaakov Beerman. Abstain. Okay. So, have I missed anybody? It looks like uh, Rabbi Sperlin put his vote into the chat and his vote was yes. Ah, thank you so much. Because I can't, I can't do the chat while I'm on this. His vote was yes. Okay, so we have forty-two yeses, one abstention, and one no. So it passes. All right, could we move on? I'm sorry. Could you could you can you throw that number again? What was that? Forty-two yeses, one abstention, and one no. Thank you That can't be. Yeah, could, Boy, you, that, could you please recap that? That comes to 42 people. We so only had, had, so had a here. number of absences. No, we had, so not, we had 12 you, absences. So, so 12. I, no, hold on, hold on, because I have it all here. We have a total of 44 people on the board. Correct. We had 12 absences, so we, we can't have 42. Can't have okay. 42. So you have 30 yeses, yes, one abstention, one no. And thank you for that correction. That's 30, not 40. <laughs> so that should be 28 yeses. We don't know. No, I we have don't it. know. If you There's have 12, 12 people absent. Hold on, hold on. If you have 44 minus 12 is 32. Okay, minus, okay, one abstraction, one no means 30, correct? Right, don't, don't worry about who the address is, just confirm how many yeses and nos. That yeah, I have you. one no, one abstention, which counts as a no. Okay. And how many yeses? But how many yeses? I have, I have 30 yeses. Okay, thank you. And that uh, equals 44. Okay. See, Thank he's doing it by good. subtraction, which is why it's, it's now we're adding up. Yeah, well, I'm doing it by, I, I, as I told you, I didn't have the voting sheets. So what I did is- So I, he didn't I, do it by tally. He did it by, he's doing it by subtraction. Exactly. Thank you. 44 people here, one no, one abstention, and 12 absences. And that number is what he's counting as yes. Yeah. What I'll do now is I'll do a formula for the yeses. So we we can answer all the questions, but that's a correct vote. All right, could we move on, please, Warren? Thank you. I'm I'm ready, Tessa. It's about to be okay. ten o'clock. I know. Fred. All right. So, everyone, okay. So listen, stay focused. All right. So next item um, was 1860 Bedford Avenue. So I'll entertain a motion. Uh, the recommendation of the committee was to accept the. Was to approve the application. Do I? I'll entertain a motion to accept. You second it. No, I need a motion. Who's 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 who's? I make, make a motion. motion. I make a motion to accept the application, please. Moved by Carmen Martinez. Do I have a second? Yes, Se I second it. Who uh, are you? Please state your name. <coughs> Mr. Heck. Oh. Uh, seconded by Shloma Heck. All right, moved and seconded. Do we have any readiness? 
Any questions? This is the one where the presentation we didn't see, right? I believe so. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Presentation. Was that put into the chat? No, it wasn't. Yes, I, I just actually them. uploaded both, both files into both the presentations chat. presentations are in the chat. I just saw it. Both presentations are in the chat. Thank That's you, correct, Ms. Martinez. This was after okay. the after the homeowners already, after the people already went through it, though, right? I, I just uh, want to clarify. Is... Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but it's important Ms. to Ms. note that it's not the applicant's here. fault that it wasn't in the chat. They submitted all the required information to the board. Correct me? Uh, okay, okay. Order of the day. Order of the day. Order of the day. Are there any questions on the motion? Can you just repeat the motion, please? The motion is to approve, uh, accept the uh, recommendation of the committee and approve the application. For 1860 Bedford Avenue. Thank you. So are there any questions with regards to this? We'd have to see in order to ask questions, Fred. Can you clarify the committee's recommendation regarding this item, please? The recommendation of the committee was to approve the application. Right. Uh, that was uh, that was put forth by the uh, applicant for the changes they made. There was a violation found for them to cure it. They had to get an have to get an approval from Community Board Nine, which they will then bring to the Landmark Preservation Committee, who will then make a determination. Now, the applicant was here. They did go through in terms of what changes were made. I understand that the members weren't able to see that. The, uh, the, um, the presentation was posted into the chat, so it is there. Are there any other questions that has been posted again? Are there any questions with regards to this application? That's cute. document is uploaded to the to the chat just now am i the only one that don't see the document it was uploaded no, to I, the chat. I, I don't either see it i'm not the only one that don't see the document you're not the only one no i don't i don't thank see you either. at 9 43 it should have been put in the chat it's in the chat room right underneath Jacob Bergman board member reply. Yeah, it's been there for a while now, but I was okay. in the oh, that's, that's the second download. It's been it so, so while you are seeing it, there are some of us who are not, and that has to be recognized. I'm looking, I'm looking in the chat room. So is there a question about the application? We have to see what we're questioning. And now is not the time to do it since the president has already gone over it. So we would just be looking at it on our own, like watching a movie. It would have been best for us to go through it with her. Mr. Chair, there's a vote on the floor. We do have a vote on the floor. Point of order is taken. Surprise, surprise. Are there any, is there any unreadiness? Any other unreadiness, any questions? We don't have information to reference for questions, Fred. Fred, I want to make a comment again. I just want to make a comment again that the fact that it took some time for application to show, let's be clear that it's not the fault of the applicant. They submitted it in a timely fashion. We had some issues on the board that took us some time to put it. We shouldn't punish the applicant for our incompetence. It's not punishing them, Yakov. That's not what it's doing. We're asking to put our vote forward on something that we haven't seen. It's not punishing the applicant. Beverly Yakov, I have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, Warren, if you would like to start the vote, you can move forward because it's a very brief presentation, and I'll go over slowly page by page. That shows you the the rendering of what Miss Dan Sloss has permitted. Provided our office, okay? Okay. And so the Bible is, is in front of us now, ma'am. I'm sorry. I don't mean any disrespect. This is Warren. If you Warren, do you can not give me one second. Yeah, if you don't agree, just vote no. Okay. Yeah, that's where I was headed, Fred. I mean, well, Warren. that's all right. Could we could we call the could we call the roll, please, and vote? Yes, I'm just waiting for for uh, Mia to give me the okay. You know what? 
uh, so Mia, you going to um, you going to go through the app? You going to scroll through it, or are you going to uh, present it? I'm going to scroll over. I don't. I don't. I don't think that we have any. You know what? We heard Claus already, but we heard it already. Yeah, Stan Claus has already presented the information. What I'm going to do oh is scroll God. through. If we any, heard it. any other questions, Very well, so. the okay. Field, Let's let Mia okay. speak, please. Start the vote. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, so Mia, please just put um, put up the, um, the the presentation. Just scroll through it. Warren, please call the roll. Okay, if you Rosemary. Have any Evans. Ideas, or if you still... go ahead, I'm sorry. Hey, Fred, I'm I'm raring to go here. Rosemary oh. Evering is absent. Yeah, yeah. She's there. She's, okay. No, I'm not she's absent. I'm here. here. She's, okay. she's here. Um, Evelyn Williams is absent. Um, Ms. Dozier, she's absent. Ferline Dozier is absent. Okay, Williams is absent. Uh, Suki, Suki Chung, Suki, are you there? Here, yes, here. Are you voting yes or no? Yes, I'm voting yes. Okay, Amy Pinkerton. I'm here and I'm still trying to figure out what I'm voting on. What was the violation that they needed to fix or wanted to, the, the landmarks doesn't like the fence that they put up? I'm not understanding it. Is abstain. Okay, so yeah. would you like to abstain? I just want to know what I'm voting on. I just want clarity. I know, but, so just, uh, I'm sorry, we're that. taking a roll call right now. So if you really? want to abstain and then so, we but, can... I just want to know, are we voting? What are we that voting on? Vote? I agree. I bought her up. Okay. Briefly, Real peer there was a change. Hold on. Hold on, Warren, before you go. I don't know if we Very can Very briefly. This. We can. We will. Very we will. Briefly, okay. There w okay, Warren. <laughs> Very briefly, there was a um, change made. Whenever you have landmark, um, whenever you have landmark uh, properties, Whatever changes you make need to be just like whatever was there that pre-existed it. They made a change without getting an approval from Landmarks, so they got a violation. Do we they know what the change us. is? That's all. Do we know what the change is? It was a change into the fence, Jesus and they're Christ. showing you what the changes were. So it's a matter of the board approving the changes, if we're okay with it, or we can okay. always say no, we don't approve. Where is the, the discrepancy? Like, what is the thing that changed that we we need to say? Like, you know what? It's not good enough, or it's fine. I, I there's. What are we looking at? Well, you should have been at the meeting then. I was that's at the not, meeting, and I heard. That's, not, that's very on on call for. Order of the day. Order of the day. No, it's not on call for. You should. Order been. of the day. Order of the day. So, unfortunately, this is where we are with this. I, I mean, you know, the, the presentation is being scrolled through right now. It's also available in the chat. If you would like to come, well, to come back to you, we can come back. Is it, it's, it's, uh, the presentation is currently in the chat, correct? Yes, I'm looking at it. So those members, um, if you need more time, defer. We will come back to you while you can scroll through and you can see what it is. You know, you can look at the presentation. Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? Mr. Chair, may I ask a question, please, before you proceed? Yes, very good. I know there are different pictures that are shown that does not pertain. It's just like examples. Is there a picture of the before and after that you just put it on screen so those people who were questioning could see what the changes were so we could just move on? So if they have the two pictures, what it was before and what the change was, so they will see what it was. <coughs> Mia, can you call out what the changes in the photos? I'm sorry for that. Um, if you guys look, um, I believe that the walkway has been concealed. Um, that is a change. If you're currently looking at the page, if you could look closely to the rendering of the house, there's now uh, plants near the windows instead of a walkway, instead of an exposed walkway. Now the walkway is concealed behind vegetation. Does everyone see that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. And next is an Example of the installation of the cast iron gate that is now being installed in front of, that they need permission for to be installed in front of the home. This photo is a rendering of how far the gate will go around the property. It is a corner property on Bedford Avenue and that is the length.
um, essentially the, the freestanding home and similar fence, they have to, this is um, ex exhibiting that they are putting up similarly situated um, renderings in front of their home. So this is a uh, part of the presentation so that they are demonstrating to the board that they are keeping in the aesthetic of the landmark portion of our district. So that's what's being demonstrated by showing you additional homes in the area. So my interpretation of the pictures is the original pictures were without the gate and they wanted a gate. That's correct. And that's why they have to show similar, similarly situated homes show, so that they, they're proving to the board that they're not stepping outside of the, the landmark aesthetic of the community. Well, that's all I wanted to know. So yes for Amy Pinkerton, thank you. Okay, give me a second. I walked away. Okay, so Amy Pinkerton is a yes. Correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, Debbie Timothy is absent. Real Peter Booms? Yes. Okay, Melanie Lewis. Miss <clears throat> Lewis. She's absent. Pat Moses. Yeah. Here. Let me give you my ID and check it out. Well, well. Pat Moses, yes or no? Yes. Okay, Melissa. That's a yes, Warren. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Caldwell. Yes. Mr. Baptiste? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Beverly Newsom? Yes. Shlomo Hecht? Yes. Uh, Lasana Primo? Yes. Linda Lorde? Yes. Uh, Tessic Hackett Vieira? Yes. Carmen Martinez. Yes. Uh, Mary Blackett. I think she's absent. I think yes. she's absent. <laughs> yes. Rabbi Sperlin. We'll come back. He's still muted. Him. I can see him. <laughs> Poor Rabbi Sperlin. Uh, Robert yeah. Dexter. Rabbi, you say yes. Uh, Rabbi Sterling, you can put your, your, your vote in the chat as well. Okay, thank you. Robert Dexter? Robert Dexter? Nolan Levinson? Yes. Warren Burke? Yes. Yaakov Pearson? Yes. Uh, Unilla Perry, absent. Michael Labard. Yes. Uh, Rashida Sadiq. Yes. Uh, Augustine Blackwell. Augustine Blackwell's absent. Mr. Limberger. Yes. Okay. Uh, Sylvester Gonzalez. Miss Gonzalez. You might be muted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, Mr. King. Yes. Okay. Erin Brown. It's Aaron. Aaron Brown. Is yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Almanor. Nick. Nicholas. Nicholas. 
Plus one mod. Yes. Uh, the I'm sorry, Miss Legate. Minor Legate? building. Yes. Minor. I'm getting it. This is why it's good to have Alejandro <laughs> do this. I'm a little dyslexic, guys and women. Francisco Leopold. Yes. Uh, Lorianne Woosley. Lorianne. Yes. Uh, and Virginia is absent. And then Rabbi Bierman. Yes. Okay. So that is unanimous. 44-4 minus the 12 is 32. Yes. Thank you very much. Motion carries. Uh, so that's uh, both of the LPC applications. We're now going to go on to the liquor license applications. Uh, first one was for Hugar LLC doing business as Silver Rice at 575 A Flatbush Avenue. The renewal. Of the, uh, yeah, the renewal. renewal of the wine, beer, and cider license. I will entertain a motion to accept the, uh, the recommendation of the committee to approve. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me, okay. Mr. Chair. Yeah. How many renewals are there? One. Just one. one renewal. Okay. And then the other, is it one or two? Two. two. Okay. So for the renewal, that's fine. And, and let's consider for the let's, two votes for the new to do them together. Well, well let's, let's get through one first. So let's do the renewal. Okay. So no, I wasn't I'll sure which was motion. which. That's why. Right. So many. No, understood. Uh, move to, by Warren Burke. Do motion I have a to approve the liquor or beer, wine, and cider license renewal. Uh, I already have a motion by Warren Burke. Do you second? Second. Second by Nolan Levinson. All right. Are there any questions? Yes. Can can we just do this by majority, Mr. Chair? Oh, that'd be great. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right, we'll do a voice vote. Amen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Any opposed? Seeing none, ayes have it. Motion carries. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Unanimous consent. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Going on to all right. Going on to items B and C. Those are for new liquor, wine, beer, and um, cider licenses. Is there any objection to combining the vote for these two items? <coughs> Is there an objection? Nope. Not on my part. No. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to combine the two. So moved. Michael I'm Library. Moved. Michael Library. Do I have a second? Second by Tessa Hackett Vera. Second by Tessa Hackett Vera. So, all those in favor of combining the two uh, resolutions, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, we're going to consider the one motion to approve both applications. Is there any questions? Uh, I, yes. You wanted to combine them. That doesn't mean we're going to approve them. They are combined. We are now going to vote on approving. Oh, okay. So, are there any questions with regards to either of the applications? Seeing none. All those in favor of approving the. Uh, aye. 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 Hold on. Okay. All those opposed. I see one note from Suki. I oppose as well. Beverly, Beverly opposes as well. And that's for both. I hear a no. Hold on, hold on. I hear a no from Suki. John, I hear a no from Beverly Newsom. Warren, you have those? I'm doing it right now. Okay. Are there any other objections? Okay, seeing none, please show those two no votes for those two members. You got Motion it. Motion carries. Motion carries. So the motion will carry 30 yeses, two noes, and the rest are absent. Very good. Thank you very much. All right. Is there any old business for the board to consider? No. Seeing any new business? Nope. No. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I make Come a motion. Second. 
Moved by everybody. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the ayes carry. We are now adjourned. The time is now. I think it's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Stop being melodramatic. It's only 10 o'clock. We've done way more. <laughs> I'm a senior. <laughs> Everyone, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, and remember, the ULERT meeting is coming up. And please keep an eye out for all future meetings. We have a lot of work to do. Thank you very much. We stand adjourned. Thank you too, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye.